Well, hello, YouTubers. It's Sunday. I think it's the third, or is it the fourth? Eh, one of those two. I'm here in actually Dallas, Texas. I moved up here to Fort Worth for the pilot. Uh, it's been uh, a bit of a hectic week. Been running like crazy, so can't complain. But this video is about you have decided to take the plunge. What now? That's right, you've decided expediting is for you. What do I do now? Well, there's several things you can do. Pray. No, that's not. Just kidding. Uh, you got to decide how you're going to get in. Are you going to be an owner operator or are you going to drive for a fleet owner? That's your first choice. You're driving for a fleet owner? Expeditors Online. Uh, it's a good place to go looking for owners who are looking for fleet drivers. Um, Transportation Life, Wheel Wings and Rudders. Uh, you can go on there, the uh, Facebook page. And uh, get on. If it'll ask you questions. Just say Big D sent me, and uh, Alan will approve you in. And you can go on there and ask, and you'll get a lot of feedback for there. So there is the first easiest way for you to get in expediting is to go with the fleet owner. Now you'll probably get a 60/40 split, or however the fleet owner does it. Uh, you'll be responsible for the gas in most part, most uh, most of it, and uh, the owner. You'll be responsible for the maintenance and things like just today. I just put six hundred dollars worth of tires in my van, all new tires all the way around. So, uh, yeah, you get stuck with that bill, but you get the benefit of the other forty percent, so well offsets. But now you've decided I'm going to be an owner operator. What do I do? I got to buy a van, exactly. And that's the point of this video. There's a lot of people talking out there who talk about videos on videos and how to do this. And some of them will basically uh, talk about, you know, buying a 2012 Sprinter, for instance. I've heard people recommend those. Here's the problem. First of all, I don't recommend Sprinters at all. They're just too high maintenance, too high cost. But most carriers have an age limit on your van. That's not talked about very often. Five years or newer. That's right. Five years or newer will be generally the going uh, uh, norm out here. So if you got a 2012 and it's 2019, it's seven years old, they don't want it. Five years or newer. And that's most major carriers are that way too. Five years or newer. I mean, some of your other carriers, I've mentioned VGS, which is a good place to go. Uh, uh, it's not a bad company. Uh, the rates are a little lower, but you run a lot more. But, uh, I mean, Tim Allen, a bunch of those guys started there. It's not a bad place. I'd actually one time considered going there. Uh, but five years and newer there, too. There you go. So, the first thing you got to do is get a van. What am I going to buy? Well, it's going to have to be five years and newer. Uh, NV, excellent van, inexpensive. Believe it or not, they are inexpensive to get into. Used. But, uh, you know, it only holds two skids, basically. You can't really put three in if you, because some skids you can't stack, you got to have three. So a lot of major carriers will disqualify them. FedEx does not, though, in case you're wondering. <coughs> FedEx runs a lot of those. Hell of a van, probably one of the best vans out here is the NV for maintenance. Uh, the gas mileage is not as great. Uh... And you don't have as much space. That's the only drawbacks. Promaster or Transit. High top extended. The biggest ones you can get only. You need space. You're really going to. Even if you don't put that many skids in, you're going to be glad you bought it. <coughs> Excuse me, a bit of cold here. That's the van you need. Five years newer. You can get them used. It's okay. Get a good used one. Get a warning on it. Out you go. So now you've figured on the van, the biggest one you can get. You don't really want to go with a cargo van. You know, the uh, Ford Econ lines, the Chevy um, Expresses, I think it is. You don't want to go with those. Those are basically going to be phased out. You're going to see that happen over the next few years. They won't even be out here. So that's what you want to get into. Now you're going to have to get insurance. Now, Expeditors Online, there's a, uh, you can go in there and uh, look that up. And uh, they have insurance companies there you can talk to. A lot of people use Progressive. That's a good place to go. 
expect your insurance to be quite high, I can tell you that, but you're going to have to get insurance. Talk to the carrier you're looking to sign on with and find out what they require and if they're putting on vans. There's an important fact to do too. Call the people who are you looking to sign on to because you're going to need to dispatch. Okay? Find out their requirements and if they're putting on vans. You'd hate to go out and buy all the stuff and find out, oh, we're not putting on vans. In fact, someone the other day was uh, complaining on the uh, Facebook group about Barrett. They're not putting on vans. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, they don't oversaturate the road with them. So, no, they're not putting on vans. They've got all they want, and uh, pretty much as that's that. Will they put on vans again when vans leave? And they do here. Not everybody succeeds in any place you go. You have to learn the system and be able to work it. <clears throat> but you're going to have to talk to them and find out what they want and what their insurance requirements are. Some of them will basically have insurance there. So you're going to have to find a dispatch. Find out what kind of van and insurance requirements. Once you've gone through those, it's basically going through your orientation and coming out on the road and uh, start taking loads. You'll need a smartphone too, by the way. But uh, that's really all, all you need to do to get in. I mean, yeah, you're going to need a bunk. I've talked about that before. Some of the sleeping arrangements, things you're going to need, straddles, that stuff. You know, that stuff we can get into later. This is what you're going to have to get into to get out here. So either you go with an owner or you find a dispatch. If you're going to go with the dispatch, my advice is to call around and find out who you can get on with. Expeditors Online has a whole list. Transportation Lives, Wheels, Wings, and Rudders. You can go in there and talk to people. Uh, there's independent owners out there you can get on to with. Uh, they do multi-carrying. But that's what you want to do to get out here. Buying your own van, you get more control. But these are the steps you need to come out here. Um, you know, once you get out here, then we can talk about refrigerators, battery packs, that kind of stuff. Just get yourself out here. This is what you're going to do. And then you just pick it up and put it down, as we say. But you got to be able to, you know, do it quickly. There's no such thing as being late out here, folks. So, in conclusion, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Please subscribe and share this video. Yes, we want to get as much people knowledgeable about what's going on out here as possible. I'm going to do videos on what rates are, too. What rates you should be accepting and what rates you don't accept. I mean, you don't want to work for free. I mean, let's just be honest. But, you know, for those who have been following, I have been busy. Um, I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about by busy. Uh, I've been running my pants off. Well, let's see. I haven't done a weekly recap yet, but... Uh, I will um, here in a little bit, but um, I went from uh, you know Brownsville, Texas, up to Northern Ohio, 1719 miles. That was on the 20 or on the 19th, 21st. I went from Northern Ohio down over towards Tulsa. Then I did a little shorty from Springdale down to the Arkansas, down to a small town southern Arkansas. Then I picked up around the office and went to the northern northwest corner of New Mexico. The little shorty was 288. The one out there was 934 miles. That was on the 25th. So between the 19th to the 25th, well, I'm 17, 27, 28, 4,000 miles right there. And uh, from, on the 27th, I went from uh, Nogales, Arizona, up to Michigan, Detroit area, 1989. There's basically 6,000 miles. Then I turned around and picked up there and came down here to Dallas for another 12. There's 7,200 miles from the 19th through the 1st, basically. That's not bad, folks. I mean, you got the 19, 21, 2, 23, 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 11 days, over 7,200 miles. So I've been moving. I haven't gotten much sleep. I crashed last night. I got up this morning, got a shower, and went and got the tires taken care of. I got to do laundry here in a minute. 
And where do you do laundry? You do them at the uh, pilots. Most of them are equipped with showers and that. We're going to cover that later too. But uh, I've been really busy. I'll be doing a recap so you all can hear the numbers. But for now, this is Big D saying like and subscribe. Share the video. If you don't like the video, share it to someone you don't like. <laughs> Just that simple. But uh, let's get the word out there. If you get out here, look me up. I'd love to meet you. I just met one of the subscribers who guy came out working for Bolt. Had a great time with him. And I am I'm doing this over a cell phone, folks, just so you know. So my image quality and all that is not there. I will get a GoPro down the road here and I'll spice it up a little, spice it up a little for you. But for now, you're gonna get what you get. Any questions, feel free to ask. Talk to you later.